And what's up, everybody? So this is another episode of The Ruben Show. We're on location, right? We're at my cousin's beautiful house here. And, um, you know, I've been lucky enough to uh, uh, film an episode here, right? We've been at a bunch of different places where we filmed. And one of the issues, one of the topics I want to jump into, and we've been seeing this a lot. A lot of us have been, a lot of my friends and family, we, we talk about this stuff, this conversation about this Gary Brecca and this health thing, right? Where he's not a doctor, but he had this crazy, he's had been having these crazy experiences with people like Dana White, and he's helped all these celebrities, and they fixed them, right? They were sick, they were, they were ill, and it's like all of a sudden, he's like this guru on how to make people feel better, and he is not a doctor, he said it. He was on Joe Rogan's podcast, and you know, he's helped Joe Rogan, and he's like, like it's just like, and so now he's touting, and he's given... He's, um, so you're going to hear the dogs barking and everything. We're going to keep going. Okay. We're going to go 30 minutes strong and it's okay if the dogs are barking. We're just going to keep, we got to pay attention. Okay. This is not, we're not a high class production here. We're just, this is like, uh, this is the way it works too bad. But uh, basically it's the dog, it, uh, the dogs, it's, it's, it's their house. So they have the right to bark and say whatever they want. So anyways, I probably should let them out. I probably should let them out, but I think they'll topple over the camera. So anyways, so this Gary Brecker guy, right? So he, he has all these. He has all these uh, 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 elixirs. He could take a blood test and you could pay your 600 bucks. He has the ice bath that's like $8,000. He has his uh, uh, his his red light bed that's $130,000. What are we talking about here, right? So you have all these things and then Dana White swears by it, which, you know, even though you know, I'm a UFC fan. I think like, is he part owner of that company? Is he investor? Is he biased? That's the problem. That's the thing that I, I'm like, we're starting to like, we're starting to think like it's foo-foo, right? But, you know, these celebrities that have touted him, that have said that he's very effective, it's kind of weird, right? Because if it's true, then it undermines a lot of things that we think about in the health and fitness world. And then, you know, you have these groups of so these celebrities are like we're getting super fit we're fixing all our ailments we're doing better we live longer we're happier we get more sleep we make more money uh we're better people you know we can save the whales now we can grow more trees we cut our grass on time you know we can tie our shoes without losing breath like all this baloney right all this stuff that people talk about in this this Gary Brecker guy and then so as a regular person as a regular schmuck like myself i start looking into it and I say, well, yeah, I want to get healthy too. I want to live a better life. I want to be able to tie my shoes without losing my breath. I want to be able to pick my nose and and uh, uh, not want to eat the boogers, right? We want to go there. We want to do that kind of stuff. Absolutely, right? And so, <laughs> and so, I say to myself, well, let's look into it, right? So let's go look at his 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 vitamins, right? The methylated vitamins. What is that, right? Red light treatment. What is that? What are we talking about here, right? This is like a new thing. And it's so crazy, right? Because in the history of mankind, there's been, I've never heard the word methylated vitamins. So how did my grandma and grandpa survive all those years? They didn't get red light treatment. They didn't go to the AutoZone, the local AutoZone. Shout out AutoZone. Not sponsored. They should, though. I don't know why. But anyways, they didn't go to the local AutoZone and go buy a bunch of taillights and make them in a series of, of things and make a bed out of them. They didn't do any of that. What did they do? They just lived their life. They ate healthy. Uh, they did what they were supposed to do. And uh, they didn't put all this uh, stuff in our body, right? All these, uh, you know, like I'm telling you, it's like the, the amount of vitamins already like relax. We're going to give you, we're going to give you a, we're going to give you a test. And, and, and here's the fad that is Gary Brecker, right? I'm going to tell you how long you're going to live. I don't want to know that. I don't want to know that. Is that like, complete narcissism that you want to know exactly how many years you're going to live according to some test what really is that what we're doing now tell me how long i'm going to live right but first let me stop eating mcdonald's then then do the test let me stop drinking three big gulps a day and then tell me how long i'm going to live well let me, let me get healthy first because uh, newsflash, if I'm eating cheeseburgers every single day and I'm drinking soda every single day, newsflash, uh, you don't got long to live. It doesn't take a $600 uh, blood sample to figure that baloney out. Okay. Are we being honest? Are we being honest? That's the question with this whole Gary Brecker thing. He's like, he's like the Mr. Obvious 
of the whole situation here. Okay, the whole Mr. Obvious of the whole situation here. And that's the thing about it. But 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 it's good information. Like, okay, so here's the deal, right? So it's good information. Uh, because you know, I've watched all his stuff, right? The person that I really am a fan of is that Andrew Huberman. That dude is number one, he's super ripped. He was on camera. Hainsey. This guy was carrying a boulder, seven a 70 pound boulder up a mountain. This dude's ripped, right? Okay, so okay. He's got a gang of tattoos, which means he's probably got some problems in there, right? Some mental issues, right? And he's a doctor. He's a legit, he's not like, so Gary Brecker's not a doctor. And he tells you he's, a, he's not a liar. He's not, Gary Brecker's not lying about not being a doctor. He's not like foo-foo and be, he's, he's not like a chiropractor trying to sell you medicine, right? He's not one of those guys, okay? Kudos to him. Not one of those guys. But then you have Andrew Huberman. What does he do? He's a legit doctor at Stanford. Legit, like real doctor. Published studies, right? little controversial, right? But if you watch all his stuff, he makes a lot of sense, a lot of stuff. When I went on my 21 day fast, a lot of me understanding all this stuff was based on a lot of stuff that he talked about. And almost everything, actually everything that he talked about that would or wouldn't happen to me was true. It happened or didn't happen to me. Yeah, facts. And I'm not saying uh, it was only on his advice. I watched a ton of other content. I, I debated this for a long time when I did it. And uh, everything worked out fine. And then after that 21 day fast, I learned a bunch of stuff. But I guess what I'm trying to say is that when you look at uh, Andrew Huberman and he's not selling you vitamins, or maybe he is, but I don't know. I mean, they all sell athletic greens, right? And newsflash, athletic greens, you can uh, uh, be happy about that or not, but there's a deal behind that. I don't want to go into too many details because then everybody's going to come after me. But but um, this Gary Brecker guy, he is impressive because he's got these people convinced that what he's doing makes sense. I mean, kudos to him, right? I mean, you know, not hating on him, not anything like that, right? But but the idea that he is going to be able to tell you how long you're going to live based on your diet. I mean, I could tell you. If, I'm going to tell you right now. If you just watch TV all day, you're not healthy. If, if you work at a job setting uh, and you're set, I mean, I can, I can, and I'm not a doctor. So he's doing what, like, he's like the Mr. Obvious. He's like the, the, the Dr. Obvious of all Dr. Obviouses, right? And then we taught this guy, is like, oh, he's amazing. He's fabulous. Yeah, it, it is pretty impressive what he's doing. But I'm not buying a bed that has a bunch of stoplights on it, a bunch of taillights, a bunch of uh, uh, a Peterbilt 379 taillights on it. I'm not doing all that, right? I don't care if my skin, I don't care if I look 45 years old because I am 45 years old, right? Are you that narcissistic? Are you that... Uh, uh, like that's some mental issues at that point, right? Your vanity level is so high that you want to buy a hundred and thirty-two thousand uh, dollar red light bed. Oh, okay. Kudos to you. Not judging you, but that's not for me. I'm not interested in that. Even if I had the money, also too, I'll super cheapskate. So uh, maybe maybe that eliminated me from uh, wanting that bed anyway. Is because we are super cheapskate. So there's that, right? So there's that. So this Gary Brecker guy, it's impressive and it, it, he makes sense. He makes sense, but I, I'm starting to feel a little Ty lopez -y with all the stuff he's selling, you know, $120 a month for medit for, for, for daily vitamins. Oh, okay. Cause they're mentholated. I don't even know what that means. And I've Googled it. I've Googled it. I did a little preparation for this today's show because I, I, I believe in some of the stuff that he's saying and he's impressive because, but I think to get the real treatment of what this guy's doing, his, $120 a month vitamins or $150 a month vitamin regiment, his $8,000 ice bucket bath thing and his $130,000 red light bed. I don't know that that's going to be effective without the fact that he like does all this extensive, extensive blood work on you. And he, and, and he does all this stuff to you aside from what he's selling you. So I think that part of what he sells you is effective on that level, but a, as a whole, you have to get the whole treatment for him. So in other words, you got to be like a multi hundred millionaire. So this guy can go to your house and schmooze you. So he can go on your podcast and, you know, and that way, you know, he can give you like the a one treatment where he has people like watching you. He goes and buys Hawks and they fly around your house, making sure that, you know, if you drop, you know, if, if something happens to, you, you know, they can, you know, you know, he, you're not going to hear or see. I want to see, like, I want him to get on a podcast and tell him about how he failed. Show me your mistakes. And I don't mean that because I want him to be a failure, but let's look at the balance of it, right? If I'm looking at all your successes because Dana White has a hundred quadrillion dollars, rightfully so, not hating on his money. We're not doing all you're gonna people are gonna take this at surface level and they're gonna think, oh, Ruben is just jealous because he's a broke person. No, 
yes and no and yes and figure that out, right? But the observation is still there where this guy is like, yeah, of course he caters to these people that have, you know, that can give you $200,000 so that you can pay for all these studies and tests and observations and they can monitor your meals. What he doesn't talk about is, you know, uh, what kind of meals to eat that complement all this kind of stuff, right? So I know this is like, Everybody's going to be like, this is a salty, Ruby, you're just being salty. Uh, Ruby, you're just jealous because you can't be healthy. Okay. If that's what, if that's the whole gist of this 10-minute rant that you're going to get, then pop more part to you. Absolutely. positively Right? But that whole Gary Brecker thing, I think we got to be careful with all that, right? And, okay, so here's my next question. And if everybody sees this podcast, and if you get to this part, kudos to you. Uh, you know, I mean, I don't blame you. It's a great podcast, Ruben Show. Like, subscribe, follow, comment, all that good stuff like that. Yeah. And, um, you know, we don't have no Patreon. This is going to be, oh, by the way, too, uh, these podcasts will now be on Twitter or X. And I know, relax, relax. It's just another place to put them. So soften your boots. Soften your boots. Don't be, don't, don't get so upset at that. I know. And you're entitled to your opinion, too. You can put it whatever. But anyways, it'll be on there, too. The full episodes available for you to watch. So there it is. Now it's in five different places. I mean, every podcast possible platform there is. Google, Apple, Spotify, the whole deal. But anyways, I digress. Let's get back on topic here. I'm just talking about minutia and details. But uh, con uh, but uh, good news, it's going to be on X now. We, we got the extended and, and we had to pay for it. But we didn't pay for what we didn't pay for is we did not pay for the check mark because I could care less about that. We just paid for the access, which is like three bucks a month. And, and newsflash, I burned three dollars a month at the truck stop buying beef jerky every single day, probably. So we're not like destroying our budget. And that's like 10 cents a day, literally 10 cents a day. So I could post long form content on X. It's just another platform to put it on. If you, so basically, you know, so anyway, so there's that. So Gary Brecker, right? So to put a pin in all this stuff and to kind of wrap it all up, uh, I'm still a fan. <laughs> all, the, all, the, all the criticism I get, you're entitled. You can be a fan and still criticize what he's doing. 100%, you can still criticize uh, what he's doing. 100%, that's okay to do that. You can't be mad at me for being able to criticize. That's, you know, America, right? For country, right? So anyways, so there's that, right? So what are your thoughts on this whole Gary Brecker thing and this new health phase where methylated vitamins and red light district uh, uh, sleeper beds and, you know, uh, you know, living in a, in an ice bucket? You know, what is all the deal with that? You know, uh, taking a shower for three minutes, uh, you know, OK, you know, how do you guys feel about that? What did your great grandma and grandpa do to survive on the open plains in the 1800s? Did they have ice buckets? Did they have menth methylated vitamins? No, they had what they call survival instincts. Right. And I think we've lost some of that. But but again, then if I start talking about this, then I'm going to sound like Gary Breck. I'm not a doctor. Uh, this is not my advice. But I uh, I uh, I uh, made you go back in time. No, absolutely not. The, the, the thing that bothers me, which is what really is a clickbaity thing, is the fact that he could tell you how long you're going to live. That's crazy. And I think that's something that needs to be addressed. That's the most woo woo -woo stuff you could actually do. Right. To me, that's like. Absolutely not. So anyways. And enough about um, the new vitamin king, just like the liver king guy. Oh, yeah. You know, we're going to eat bull testicles and all this other stuff. And then it turns out that this guy is what is he doing? He's taking the roids. He's doing the same thing. They're all hypocrites. All these uh, health nut guys, you got to be careful with all of them. Take all of that with the great assault. In every single room, there's probably a half a nugget of knowledge. And if you got but you got to exhaust your time and put it all together and watch it all. And if you do that, then maybe you'll learn something. Because that's what I do. When I was want to learn about fasting, I, I endlessly was watching videos because I was nervous like everybody else because I'm not a genius. And, you know, you get you gather all this information and you just got to go down like rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole. And that's why I'm kind of foo on, on Gary Brecker because, uh, you know, if you look in, you know, if you listen to Joe Rogan, he's had Dr. Rhonda Patrick on. She's a legit doctor. She's legit genius. She's clinical studies. I mean, she's like, she's got all the credentials. You listen to her, right? She's got some knowledge, right? Dr. Uh, Andrew Huberman, he's a doctor, real doctor. And he's not a doctor in like, um, he's not like a mechanic. He's not like a, he's not like a PhD in mechanical engineering. This guy's a doctor in what he's talking about. Yeah, that's important too. If you have a PhD in agriculture and you're telling me what kind of vitamins to take, I'm out. I'm out. I'm 100% out. So anyways, there's that. And so, um, yeah, I talked a lot about that. That was 15 minutes. That's half the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. But there'll be one tomorrow, too, so don't worry about it. I'm going to upload this in about an hour or two. 
And then, so anyway, so, so, so the last subject I want to talk about, and this was something that was interesting. Everybody's talking about this whole college football thing, right? And everybody's talking about how they got snubbed and it's not right. And Florida state is out. They're undefeated, but they're out or whatever the deal is with the whole Florida state thing. Right. I haven't been paying too, too much attention because I've been living my life. I've been trying to post these videos every single day. And I think this is day seven. We're in day seven now. So we've got, I think we're almost going to be, I think this is a whole week. We've been able to post every single day, 30 minutes, video, audio. We haven't missed a day. Go check them out. They're on order. And I will be uploading all the videos to uh, um, X, so we'll be caught up. So then you'll get a video every single day. It's the way it works. So anyways, but the but the scuttlebutt about the whole Florida State thing getting snubbed, it is the most ridiculous notion that, you know, the ranking system in college football has always been subjective. It's not like, when you talk about strength of schedule, that is a surface level criteria that the reason why they don't use that as the only reason why to determine the rankings is because it is subjective. You know, it's like Alabama lost early in the year and they ran the table and they won their conference. Right. And you say to yourself, well, it's not fair that Alabama's in because Alabama has one loss of Flo wrong. Florida state dethroned. I mean, Alabama dethroned, the then number one ranked team in the nation. So does that put him in the number one spot? See, we're doing college football math now, right? And that's the thing that gets me about all these college, these, these pundits, and you see it, and it happens every single year. It's great content, but it gets kind of nauseating, right? Like if you're a college football fan, uh, you know, Florida State was snubbed, it's not right. Everybody in Florida State, they're all mad now because somebody got snubbed and somebody got beat. None of that matters because I'm going to tell you right now, it happens every single year. And the only reason why that happens is because the bowl schedule, the bowl system is antiquated and needs to be replaced. And nobody has the cojones to make that change in the NCAA. Now they're playing pay players. You need to have an eight or 16 team bracket. You have enough bowl games. You just make all the bowl games. You stop calling them bowl games. You start calling them playoff brackets. I don't understand what is the big deal with that. You're already paying the players. The coaches make $15 million a year. Have you seen these college stadiums? They're full. The college stadiums are full. And we're talking full. Those college stadiums have a 100,000 person capacity and those tickets are not $5, ladies and gentlemen, and they're selling tickets like crazy. So you mean to tell me you don't want to have more playoff games? And they, and then you know, but see, here's what I think it is. And, I'm, and, and, and nobody talks about this, right? It's selfishness. The, and, and, and here's the selfishness aspect of it, right? So you have the NCAA, right? And you have bowl games, you have 50 bowl, you have 25 bowl games which is enough bowl games to make a playoff bracket, right? So they do play these amount of games. They have the infrastructure. They have the timing. You have all of that in place already. But it's the selfishness inverted. And what I mean by this, and I know that makes absolutely no sense, and that's okay. You can call me out on that, and you can make a comment and say that this is uh, dumb, which is your right. And go ahead. I don't care. But anyways, um, so the, 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 the thing about um, the... The thing about the selfishness in the NCAA is this idea that we got to give all these other teams a chance to play another game when absolutely not. The reason why you have a, such a disparity in NCAA football and you have this weirdness that's going on with these bowl games, I'm not watching any of the bowl games. Are we being honest here? The bowl games, what? What are we doing with the bowl games? I'm going to watch Liberty play Tacoma State. You can put that on TV. Well, that's a market, this and that. What if that was a playoff game? We're watching the playoffs. We watch the playoffs. Everybody watches every level of the playoffs. The, 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 the ratings and every single sport that has multi-tier playoffs, it goes up. You the, the viewership goes up. And for sure, we need to have these playoff games when everybody's watching them, Right. I mean, I don't understand the logic behind this. So the selfishness is you want to give everybody a chance to play a bowl game and play another game. Eh, wrong. What if you had a 16-team playoff? You go 16, 8, 4, 2, boom, four weeks, another month, and you have all those games that are being played. But what I think it is is that the top-ranked teams, they're going to end up playing three games. Or you have a 12-team playoffs where you have two teams with the bye, the best record, so they don't play. So you give other people a chance to be on TV and you get the ratings and you get the boost and you get the stadiums are jam-packed. Every one of these football stadiums, like the top 20 
or the top 40 teams in the NCAA football, they kind of sell out all their stadiums. And then you have, you know, Colorado with Deion Sanders, which was four and eight, and they're selling out too. They 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 sold all of their tickets before the, the season even started. By the way, kudos to him. That's another video I'm going to make. Uh, that'll probably be, what's today, thir a Wednesday? Uh, that'll probably be a Friday video. I'm probably going to talk all about Deion Sanders. There's so many levels to what happened to him and the complexities of, of the dynamics of what he did. It's so impressive and unique. And if you think you're going to be able to recreate that, if you think you're going to be able to get a Deion Sanders level recruit, uh, you're wrong. But anyways, let, let, let's get back on topic here. I veered off a little bit and we got 10 minutes left. So we, we're, I'm going to put a button in this. I don't know if I'm going to talk about another subject, but I have more to say about the NCAA. And so what they do is they have these meaningless games by these teams that have you know, it's like mediocre play after me. It's like give it, give everybody a chance to play. That's not interesting. That's not interesting. And it kind of dilutes the quality of the 14 playoff because four teams is not enough. There's a, over a hundred teams in the NCAA division one football over a hundred. So that means that it's like 99% of people. So if you, I mean, come on, man, we're starting to get ridiculous. So you might as well just make an all-star game team, uh, all-star team and play a game there. Like have a pro bowl for the NCAA. I mean, it's preposterous. The number of games, four teams out of 120 are worthy. There's no upsets. The, 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 these games are almost predictable or they're so close that they're, they're, they're almost boring, right? You want to see, you know, it's like in, in, in basketball, right? I'll give you an example in basketball and baseball is doing it now too, where you have the guy that barely makes the playoffs, uh, uh, makes it into the postseason, the play in tournaments, the one uh, game playoffs, don't, you know why those are interesting is because a team that dominated the whole year that gets injured or that has problems or there's injuries or there's inconsistencies or if people have figured out their little tricks, then the little guy can come in and have a great game. Like that's what makes sports interesting. This NCAA football thing, it's preposterous, man. And I have a feeling that's all controlled about long-term contracts, boosters, and, you know, we don't want to give up this situation because we've been able to, I mean, it's preposterous what they're doing. And they're hurting themselves, just like the NIL. And I made a video about this, too. One of my podcasts is a couple of podcasts ago. I talked about how the NIL is a failure because uh, when your quarterback makes $5 million a year as, as, as a college football player and your offensive lineman makes zilch, zero, nothing, and I got to protect this guy so he can make $5 million, uh, we know that's going to not go over well. And you know, eventually there's going to be rife with um, uh, um, inconsistent play. And I'm blinking. Inconsistent play at minimum. That's the formula for baloney. And that same group of people that develop these kind of systems is the same group of people that are tainting NCAA football. There's so much opportunity there, and you can make it a quality second part of the season. It's like NFL football, right? We're, we're ending the season, and we're starting to have everybody's coming out who's going to make the playoffs and all this other stuff, the quality of play. All that stuff is great and dandy, but it's going to be amazing because it's like another season in football. And you watch the playoffs, you enjoy it, and it's all great and dandy, and that's fine and so forth and so on. But what happens? It's interesting. You watch it. You buy tickets. You go. And for these local these local cities, it's a boost in their economy, right? Hotels sell out, food service, restaurants, you know, everything. You know, go down the line, rental cars, you know, uh, you know, tires for the rental cars. You know, everything, right? Every, uh, you know, overtime for the police departments. You know, everything, it, it gets boosted. Electricity use, everything, right? The, these college football games, are boosts to their local economy, you know, and, and I'll give you an example of that because a lot of these NC, a lot of these teams don't publicize this, but it was a real big deal when the University of Colorado, they were talking about that Deion Sanders effect in some of these games that sold out, that it was $11 million boost to the local economy. Those are local jobs. Those are people that have to pay rent. Those are people that work at bars that maybe make, you know, 80 to hundred dollars a day in tips. And then, you know, they have, you know, Deion Sanders rolls around and you know, what happens, right? These, these, these waiters or waitresses are making $300 a day because you get people from all over the place. They're concentrating and they're having a good time. The quality of the, the NCAA football has a big old effect. That's why like you know, uh, um, NFL teams and all these sports teams, they have a huge impact on the local economies. Some economies, some local economies are too small to even handle that. That's the crazy part of it. And I'm sure there's some kind of, you know, uh, 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 accountant that's figured this out, right? So 
So when you look at the NCAA, this is the parallels to it, right? I guarantee you some of these lower tier bowl games that are going to start happening in what, a week or two, uh, they're not sellouts. They're not sellout stadiums. It doesn't boost the economy like what you would think it is. It's a normal game, right? If you had real playoff games, you can up the ticket price. You, it, it will help alumni. It would help enrollment. It just help all over the board. But the fact that they don't do it is what makes it kind of uh, diluted. And, it, and it's going to keep on happening, right? Because it's the old model that's antiquated. That has a, it, it doesn't really have a quality of feel to it. And then especially with streaming service, right? How dare they, right? And the NFL, the NBA, they're all kind of getting on board with it, right? Where you have, like the NFL's streaming service is kind of wonky still because they restrict some of your replay. I get all that, right? But they're getting there, right? They have, uh, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm a full-time truck driver. So when I'm on the road and I park somewhere on Monday Night Football, I try to get my load there delivered so I can watch that game. And I can watch it from anywhere as long as I have a decent connection. And the connection has been better and better and better. So imagine if you did that. Imagine if you paid $25 for all of NCAA's playoffs. I'm just saying, okay, I get it. I don't want to pay no money. Okay, respect. But let's say if you want to look at, let's say if you have the NCAA football playoff, playoff package, your 16-team tournament, you have all these tiers, it's for a month and a half, and now everybody can make a little bit of money. You can spread that amongst teams that don't have a bowl game. And then, um, you know, so you have that opportunity where people can watch these things. They can showcase players. Now that these players could get paid, you can put them on a national stage. You can focus on them. And again, a 14 playoffs, not enough. There's not enough superstars. There's not enough there. You don't have enough meat on the bone. It's like having one champion for 200 people. That's not going to work. You're not going to have that, right? It's just not, that's the problem with the NCAA football system. And nobody talks about it because you're not allowed to talk about it. That's another thing too, right? There's restrictive nature of being able to, that's why like in, in, in this podcast, I'm not going to have copyrighted material on here because you got to get express written consent. By the way, too, nobody has, uh, in order for you to repodcast my podcast, you got to have express written consent. And good luck on trying that with me because I'm the one, I'm my own show. So if you want to broadcast it, uh, a hundred percent, but, uh, let's come to terms financially. Yeah. Put it out there. Right. But anyways, the point is, and I don't know why I, I don't know why I keep veering off here. We're, we're kind of all over the place, but anyways, um, this is, I'm going to wrap it up with this, but yeah, so I, I'm, I'm still a fan of college football. Just cause I, again, just cause I criticize doesn't mean that I'm not a fan. That's another thing too, that these pundits, these sports pundits do, they make you choose either you're a fan of it or not. Why do you hate college football? I do not hate college football. I love college football. I think it's very interesting and intriguing. And I think there's a lot of levels. It, it's a very good story, right? It's like a the greatest soap opera. It's one of the greatest. So all sports are soap operas, right? And you can follow along with the players. But if you had a 16-team tournament, right, or then... What do you have? You have 10% of the college teams that are going to be in the playoffs. That's way better than 1% or 2%. Have, have we thought about these numbers? Have we thought about the fact that that number is so low? Have we contemplated this? That like, why would you have that? So, yeah. So anyways, th those are my those are my two rants. And they were kind of connected in the sense that, you know, it's like the foo-foo stuff and it's like, you know, uh, being able to criticize these things, but still liking them, right? Like, like again, the Gary Brecker, I'm skeptical hippo. I got, I'm, I look at him like that, like. And if you know the low budget Gary Brecker, uh, throw it my way. I don't, I don't want, you know, is there a lower version, lower budget version of methylated vitamins? Well, I don't even know what that means again. Anyways, like, subscribe, follow all that good stuff with that. We did 30 minutes. We're at 28 minutes and 30 seconds. Uh, we're going to tap out here because I think I think I'm going to do it like that. It's going to be and, and I've been doing it this way, but I haven't talked about it. But, yeah, it's going to be 30 minutes or less. We don't want to go over. We want to keep it consistent. 30 minutes. Um, all that good stuff. Bye. Talk to you guys later. Bye.